Clicking record. So welcome everyone. Good evening. I'm very happy to be here this evening with Dr. Robert Duncan. This is Ramola D from Ramola D Reports. And I'm here with a very special interview today. Um, Robert Duncan has consented to do a live stream. So we are all going to be treated to a live interview this evening. Uh, Robert Duncan, as many people may know, is a scientist and an author. He is the author of The Matrix Deciphered and Project Soul Catcher, which many people may have read and may know about. And um, he's requested to introduce himself. So I'm going to turn the floor over to him right away. And uh, Robert, do please tell us more, because that's part of what we wanted to start with really this evening, your background and who you are and the work you've done. Yeah, you know, I. I... I'm somewhat shy about talking about my background, but uh, I have uh, many degrees from uh, great universities, Ivy Leagues, um, and I, uh, I worked for uh, the ABC companies that are often called the uh, uh, DARPA projects for the CIA, projects for the Department of Justice, projects for the Army, Navy. Examples of such projects are uh, reading brainwaves to control robots. Uh, I wrote the artificial intelligence code to track the uh, nuclear, uh, the submarine fleets around the world, uh, robotic surgery and medicine. And it was, it's been quite an interesting career um and of uh, they could only have kept me dumb and i love my job uh but i found out that uh, people were using my work for amoral activities not just for defense of my country and to catch criminals they were using it for uh, other purposes uh, within my own country, and I, I could not have that. I, uh, I've been an international business consultant, a professor, you know, a long career doing many things. Um, but I got into this uh, line of research um, because I was, I thought I would be the first to do human brain uh, communications. Um, I, I'm sorry, uh, computer to uh, human brain communications. And um, I found out this group of targeted individuals, which are complaining about the exact thing that you would expect from a weaponized version of BCI or brain computer interfacing technologies or brain to brain interfacing technologies. And I'm like, this is a bit coincidental and rarely am I the first to discover anything. So uh, I did more research, thoroughly convinced <laughs> after working on it, portions of it for, the, uh, for DARPA and then realizing, oh my gosh, this is my work they're using to harm people. Um, and uh, and is it possible so, that the work that you were doing was set up in such a way that it could have been used in that way? Oh, yeah, absolutely. But remember, we're lied to as scientists and we're compartmentalized. Uh, so I was doing, let's say I worked on voice morphing technology. Well, that was supposed to be used on enemy communications to sound like the general uh, over the battlefield of the adversary and misdirect them. Well, I see that with TIs as well. They hear their parents' voice, uh, voice morphing and talking about them behind their back and being used in very deceptive ways. Same with voice recognition. Um, uh, so in a sense, you were portion, putting two and two together, the work that yeah. you had done, you were suddenly finding was being reported in the community from various people as yeah. occurring to them. Correct, correct. And, uh, and then, so that led me on this, oh, geez, it's been so long, at least 22 decade journey of researching and alerting the public to these technologies. 
Uh, I went. Was this to, back uh, in the 90s or 80s, uh, Robert? I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, I'm just trying to get a sense of the time. Yeah, around 2000. Around 2000. Around 2000. And, uh, you know, I even went with the former head of the LA FBI uh, to Congress, uh, spoke to the Judiciary Committee, the Armed Forces Committee, 23 senators, uh, and most importantly, the Intelligence Committee. And they are supposed to be the oversight. Uh, it was obvious to me that this was MK Ultra on steroids, same tactics being used, the mind control, the breakdown of the human uh, will and using those programmed assassins or uh, Manchurian candidates or whatever their desire may be, just eliminate the target. Uh, and uh, the further I followed the white rabbit down the hole, more disturbing it got. <laughs> um, this and, is absolutely uh, incredible. First of all, Thank you for doing that, for going to Congress and going and speaking to these Senate committees and to the Senate Intelligence Com Committee, etc. cetera. Uh, it sounds like this was a replay of the Church Committee of the 1970s then, because you were coming forward as a DOD CIA whistleblower and Navy and NATO, etc. whistleblower. Speaking about this matter, what was the reception like? <laughs> and this is when I lost faith of my government. <laughs> was that event. Um, the Senate Intelligence Committee uh, said, we've never heard of MKUltra. And that's their one job was to know Everybody's the heard of MKUltra. And so both the FBI, you know, the head of the FBI and I look at each other like, oh, this is not going to go well. They're starting off with a lie. <laughs> They've never heard of this. Uh, but Frank Church, ironically, I ended up in Idaho, um, in Frank Church, the center of the- Where you are. Yeah, where I am, that started the investigations into MKUltra. Uh, and now, you know, it's gone through so many name changes. We just use that as an anchor point, but uh, it, it, who knows what the new budget, the new name is at this point. Well, you see, this is the whole thing, right? And this is part of what I hope we can talk about a little bit further. This is the whole issue, not just of compartmentalization, but about secrecy. There's a lot, uh, there's a huge interest in keeping things secret, right? Well, and I, I learned why is because most humans want to do good. They want to believe they are doing good. And then especially if you work for government, you know, you feel patriotic and you feel good that pride you know flowing through your brains uh your veins and uh, if you knew the truth you wouldn't do your job and so they have to keep it compartmentalized oh you uh, mean they're actually fooling the very people who are working for them yes correct only a very few at the highest levels know what's going on uh, so they have to fool everybody down the chain um and it works well <laughs> it works well, but their house of cards of lies is going to collapse soon, and uh, there'll be quite a blowback from it. Oh, I'm so happy to hear that, <laughs> considering, you know, the subject that we're dealing with and the fact that what I've been reporting on for five years is precisely this, the, the consequences and the outcome of these compartmentalized and secretive programs that have wreaked havoc on this country. And worldwide actually and worldwide. that's something i wanted to ask you yes. how is it how is it that mk ultra has become a, a thing that is now having worldwide consequences <laughs> that people are reporting this around the world the same thing the same exact thing yeah yeah and, then, and that's kind of how i uh test my subjects and i've done two thousand interviews at least uh and they all started to sound alike um, this is a script. It doesn't matter what country you're from, language you speak, what your education level is or anything. They're using like well, basically seven or eight different scripts. Uh, they're not very creative in the DOD. Let's put it that way. Um, I think we <laughs> figured that out. <laughs> and, uh, and, you know, it's, it's a worldwide weapon. Uh, you, you can't put artificial electronic fences and boundaries around 
tax base, you know, borders. Uh, so no, it, it's worldwide and it was intended to be worldwide for the new world order government. And this, uh, you know, George Bush senior talked about new world order. He was head of the CIA. Uh, even uh, we have a candidate, uh, Barack Obama's uh, vice president Biden said, the new world order is of utmost importance in one of his latest speeches. So it really doesn't matter which candidate you vote for. Uh, it seems like they're all on board for this global takeover. Would you uh, say we are in the new world order currently? Uh, yes and no, it's just gonna get worse. All military technologies will eventually seep into the policing forces of the uh, you know, the United States, especially. But that's already happened, though. Yeah, that's already happening. So, yeah, we're in the middle of the transition. Uh, they they have basically four more countries to go. Uh, China, Russia, North Korea, and Iran. And uh, then the rest of the world's kind of nothing. Um, uh, we And here, here's another kind of theory. Why would you want democracy in every country? Well, it's because of mind control weapons. We can control who gets into power. So the CIA gets especially interested when someone wins, let's say like Donald Trump or uh, Jesse Ventura, who I interviewed with, governor of uh, Minnesota. Oh yes, the very famous uh, interview. He said as soon as he got in, uh, 11 or 12 CIA guys uh, interviewed him at the in you know the basement of the government mansion or whatever, and asked him, "How did you get elected? You were not supposed to win." And uh, so they were just curious why their their voting models were wrong. Wait a minute! Uh, I thought the CIA knew everything, controlled everything. You yeah, know. well, sometimes they're wrong. Sometimes they get it wrong, and that's what they want to learn Interesting. from. Interesting, but. but uh, the point is to give the illusion of democracy and freedom that your vote counts, but not actually allow it to happen uh, in terms of global events and-, and uh, Right, and they, con they control it through the media. They maintain this farce that, you know, we are living in a separate nation. We have a democracy, etc. But it appears that from everything you are saying that the military and intelligence powers in this country, well, we know they have a connection with the intelligence powers in other countries as well around the world. And they appear to be running the entire show, the world show, not just the US show. And you know, I would question the whole uh, Russia China thing as well. I mean, are they really separate countries? Are they really operating separately from the CIA? In the DOD? Oh, I I don't know about that. I was brainwashed in the Cold War, and so I'm supposed to believe Russia's their enemy, <laughs> you know. And what, right. What, I mean, that's what I, we're no, all I, we're living in America. That's what we're yeah. indoctrinated to believe. Russia yeah. is an enemy. China is an enemy. <laughs> They're competing with us. <laughs> yeah. Etc. Um, and so it it is interesting because. Without a foe, let, let's just say the whole new world order thing works out and we're one world government. Well, now we have no one to kill anymore. And our, our entire <laughs> yes. killing is. We have no enemies except, except the people the inside the country. The economy will collapse. And our entire, the US economy is based on a war machine. Uh, I, General Eisenhower, President General Eisenhower said it. Beware, this is what's going to happen if you, if you do not stay vigilant. It will become the entire economy and they will create wars just to keep people employed. And uh, unfortunately, it became true. And then we have President JFK, who I think was just about to spill the beans more exactly about these mind control weapons. Really? And then he got assassinated by a Manchurian programmed. Uh, uh, brainwashed, uh, uh, you know, assassin. So, so this, yeah, it gets very deep. So this suggests that these particular programs, these mind control programs, these neurotech targeting programs, neuro disruption programs, they are sort of creme de la creme. They're the ultimate secret that the DOD CIA wants to keep forever secret. And they really think they can get away with it. I mean, how have they gotten away with it so far? 
up till now? Uh, using uh, many uh, techniques by counterintelligence, we spent a lot of money on counterintelligence. And what does that mean? Literally dumbing down the population. So we create cover stories like alien abductions or... Okay, uh, that's sort of disinfo mind control, right? Through television yeah. programming and stories in the community, etc., about aliens, UFOs, flying saucers, abductions, military, which are actually military abductions from what many people <laughs> report, etc., things like that. But are they also using technology to dumb people down? They're doing both. Uh, so, uh, yes, it is a way. Uh, in which to, let's say you're competing economically with another country or in the Olympics. It's, they've been accused of using this. Uh, um, you can uh, dumb down a population or confuse them. And I say counterintelligence does enough of that just on its own or watching the general mass media news will dumb you down enough. <laughs> but, uh, right. but, but they're doing the opposite experiments too. Uh, we only, in our investigation, we only hear about the people complaining about the tortures and the really brutal experiments that they're doing. But I've run into other people where uh, they have a voice, for example, that just compliments them all the time and puts them up and, you know, you're the best. And uh, they, they, right. they're also, <laughs> yeah, but you don't hear about them because they like it. Um, they and, think it's their inner voice that's yeah, they sort think of being it's very optimistic. Voice. They think yes. they're, they're wonderfully optimistic people generally, etc. Exactly. You know, that's really interesting. <laughs> And then uh, they do, they're doing experiments of combining four or five up to six minds together, uh, hive minds. Hive minding. Uh, you know, another term is brain nets. And they're doing experiments of how to firewall the human mind. There was a colonel which uh, had a famous paper. Uh, I forget his name right now, but he, it was... Uh, the mind has no firewall. And it's so true. We we didn't evolve that. It, it's not part of our structural makeup of the human brain or any brains that I know. And, um, and so they're trying to develop literally thought filters. So you can't have specific thoughts. I want to go out and kill someone. Well, as soon as your brain thinks that, it dampens the signal. Uh, so that could be a, a good use, maybe. Um, but um, the, they're also increasing intelligence. So four brains hive together. They'll become dysfunctional in some ways because you're rewiring them. Uh, and MIT's done this with blue light mice. And they, they, uh, they are able to solve a singular problem with combining brands. And so it's interesting. We think of ourselves as, well, two halves of a human brain. You can cut the corpus callosum. You still think you're one person. And they, they used to do that for epilepsy uh, surgeries. Um, but you're technically two different people. Uh, but this is the reverse. This is integrating more brains, more half brains into one individual. And hence, you can increase intelligence for warfare strategy or whatever you want to use it for. Uh, so there are a lot of interesting network configurations uh, that, uh, and that's what I do. I just theorize. I don't experiment on humans whatsoever. But I, I'm working on a book about this. Um, oh, that's great to hear, Robert. You know, this particular notion alone, just this notion of hive minding, bringing a few brains together to create a brain net or a hive mind is very interesting. And you're suggesting that, you know, scientists get into this because it sounds kind of interesting from a theoretical point of view. But in actuality, you know, what people are reporting in the field, those who are targets, those who are reporting, they are targeted individuals. You know, they are reporting victims of neurotech. They are reporting that, yeah, they can hear hive minds. They can hear people having a sort of roundtable conversation in their heads, mm -hmm. you know, via V2K or synthetic telepathy, etc. 
And it's not a very pleasant notion. They don't want to hear people talking to them all the time. No, no. It, it, it's totally stealing one's brain, stealing their soul. You know, there's horror movies like called Body Snatcher. And that's in, in its best form. That's what this technology can do. It can run other software, overlay it on your hardware called the brain. And, uh, you know, this brings up so many issues. Well, how can you have justice if you don't know whose mind was behind the actions of the body? And so it's going to turn the justice system on its head. Uh, they can erase memories, reprogram them with false memories. And so you can't even use a polygraph test to see who they are who they are. The CIA has been well known to split personalities and using hypnosis and other things. And one of their old mind control uh, weapons was called REHIC, Remote Hypnotic Intercerebral Control. Um, so let's say you're just connecting two minds. One is a trained mind of how to clone beliefs onto the target mind. Uh, you can make them angry. You can alter their, their voice. Let's say you're a politician and you want to make them sound like an idiot in front of the microphone. You can uh, screw up their speech. You can, I mean, you can alter the outcome of so many things. You can insert thoughts. Um, but some of them were, you're talking about the overt targets that literally uh, extra sensory perception. So we did a lot of that work in the seventies with the Russians. Well, it's true, but I always thought of it as mystical force or whatever. No, no, it's literally training the brain to understand external neural signals. So, uh, for example, Duke University, they plugged some electrodes into a monkey's brain, gave it a third arm to eat food. The brain is very malleable, learned how to pick up food just with the robotic arm and feed itself a third arm, you know. And so think of extra sensory perception as you're training these brains to accept the signals of something else that is biocorrelated with it to its brain. Um, but uh, yeah, right now it's it's being used with trickery. So there's uh, it's called offensive information warfare, general terminology of uh, you know that, that can be anything from hacking your computers and uh, spoofing you to your friends, saying you sent the email, uh, spoofing your voice, you know, on a phone call. But uh, it it it's such a wide uh, variety. This is the more secret um of the technologies of uh, uh and especially dream programming that's the one that people are most susceptible to uh we they can manipulate subliminally your dreams and your dreams affect the conscious when you're awake um and that's just dangerous I mean, that's not free will you're taking away someone's autonomy of thought and and uh, decision making. Uh, so I don't even like the term free will. I prefer degrees of autonomy uh, is the term I would replace that with. Um, so we, I'm, I'm sorry, I've been babbling. <laughs> no, that's quite all right. Oh, it sounds like this. Did I your question? <laughs> no, I think you did. I think, you know, there. it sounds like what you were talking about is there are so many different technologies in use. There are so many different aspects of these mind control programs that are currently being used. You know, as we know from listening to the reports of people out in the field, and as you know, perhaps from also your, doing your interviews and also perhaps from your work, and that's really what I'm interested in finding out more about. I mean, you kind of worked with these guys. You worked in the DOD. You worked in DARPA. You know, you worked with the CIA. I understand you can't talk about everything you worked on. But no, what you're asking about is what is the moral alignment? And... I will tell you, I've worked with some of the most brilliant scientists in the world, but only a few of them were not morally flexible.
and that's the term they use in the CA. Like, Which means they were all mostly morally flexible. Yes, they didn't really care. They don't care, were, right? They didn't, they didn't care. Yeah. You know, and I, I, yeah, I just wasn't born that way. I, you know. Like, Thank God I'm, for that, Robert. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm here to, my primary directive is to optimize happiness, minimize suffering in a sustainable way for all living creatures on this planet. Very simple, and maybe my formula is different than others, but uh, it keeps my moral compass set in the right track. So it seems like, you know, uh, the people who are working on these brain projects, they are interested in probing, going beyond the limits. There are no limits, no borders, no boundaries, no morals, no scruples. You know, head right ahead, see what you can do, see the extent to which you can control somebody else. And they're not just interested in controlling one other person, you know, like in this Manchur Manchurian candidate program, they just want to control one person or two per people or three or four they want to control everybody, right? They are interested oh, oh, in controlling oh, everybody. Ultimately, that's the goal. Uh, even I think it was, uh, oh, somebody in our government in the Justice Department said, we're going to start turning to pre-crime. So yeah, you eventually have to read every person's brain, see when those moments of rage occur, and maybe arrest them you know, to, to prevent them from doing anything. I would suggest that we're already in that space. Yeah, I, I think so. But but it's being rolled, again, we're, it's still being rolled out. Um, I would say, I would say it's all grayscale. It's not black and white. So it's a matter of control, how well the cognitive models are working. And that's why they have to grab more people uh, uh, their models and experiment on them to add them to the probability data databases using a Markov models, uh, etc. And so I would say it's probably um, due to the bell curve, uh, eighty percent rolled out. Uh, can you hear me? Okay, I got a yes. message. Yes, it's been unstable. kind of. It's okay. been kind of dicey. It's been kind of shaky. Okay. I was, yeah, but you're okay now. I can hear you. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. You it, said when, about 80%, you think, has been already rolled out? Yeah, I, I would give it about 80%. So they're grabbing the unusual minds, the creative ones, the misfits, the hyper-intelligent. Uh, those minds, they can't model easily into the, you know, their, their basic model. Um, and so they're studying those to add those probabilities. Uh, and they're doing it through, you know, they're using the FBI as well, right? And they're using oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. fakery of the terrorist watch list by putting all the smart people on the terrorist watch list uh, and then subjecting them to these gory experiments, right? Well, you know, I'm always, I, you know, I know a, a couple high level FBI, former FBI, they retired after 20, in their 25 years of service or whatever. And they talk about how corrupt their agencies were. And we're hearing about it now with the FISA courts that the FBI was, uh, you know, literally faking stuff so they could get an acceptance for false surveillance. But those have always been my good guys. You know, if, if, if the highest level of sort of criminal justice has failed this country. There is no hope now for any legitimate government. And uh, so I've deluded myself, you know, that they are the good guys, but, uh, and that the only reason they might have done what they have done was because they were tricked by false intelligence, uh, which we've seen many times. The very thing that led to the Vietnam War, for example, Gulf of Tonkin or, uh, you know, a whole bunch of other, other instances, uh, the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and this is my favorite top secret document that was leaked, was Operation Northwoods. They're going to attack civilian sites in the U.S., military sites, so we go to war with Cuba. Cuba, I, mean, I was going to mention Cuba. Our, our, our government, you know, the, those at the very top are very conniving, and as long as they can get away with it, uh, they will. And now I remember your question. You asked how they kept the secret for so long. They haven't. They've hidden it in plain view. It's almost in every movie now you see in Hollywood. Um, 
And that's kind of their way of saying, no, it must be science fiction for the public, or they're trying to get them used to the concept. This that's really a good happened. point. Um, Basically, they are revealing it all, but people don't have any idea. And, you know, mainstream media has a large part to do with it because they just kind of mm -hmm. keep keep movies and fiction and Hollywood in one category and then act like, you know, uh, following what's going on on the Hill is another category. And uh, there's a lot of lies and, you know, cover ups going on by a media. So, yeah, yeah. And so you know, one of my professors at Harvard was uh, B.F. Skinner, and he was a behavioral psychologist, world famous. Um, and there was rumors he put his children in boxes to prove his theories about language and belief systems and everything else, religions, and that he actually did it. And back in his day, science was, you know, above governments and they just said, oh, do whatever you want, experiment on humans. So he was both a hero and a villain, but that's really what we have going on now uh, within the bubble of information that Americans get, or any country really, but America's ranked right in the middle of free media uh, by Reporters Without Borders. Uh, but if you talk to the locals, you know, I live in a very uh, middle America kind of environment. Uh, they really believe they're getting the truth and America is free and they're in this information bubble, which is called the Skinner box. You have to travel the world and get, you know, more perspectives to see that, uh, no, the, <laughs> the world and your government is not what you think it is. I love that term, the Skinner box. That, that sort of describes exactly what most of us are inside. Thanks mm -hmm. to reading the New York Times, the Washington Post, watching CNN, etc. You know, that's the kind of storyline you get uh, from just staying within that space. But um, coming out of that space and kind of returning a little bit to, the, to this issue of the technology and the issue of the kind of behavior management pre-crime technology that they are rolling out and that they are using and that they've been developing over the last 30 to 40 years, if not earlier. 60 it's, years at least. 60 years. And it seems like there's a kind of a coming together, a confluence of non-lethal weapons technology, neurotechnology, you know, kind of weaponized neuroscience coming together. And then from the computer world, you've got machine learning and artificial intelligence coming together. So all of this, would you see this as a kind of a moment of confluence? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, and, you know, it, it's good that we have government agencies that can predict and see ahead <clears throat> and that are looking for the dangers of these new technologies, genetic engineering. I, I want to buy my own CRISPR machine. Maybe I'll create a virus here. Oh, uh, my gosh. Uh, you know, it's getting so, worse out there with <laughs> CRISPR <laughs> editing. Yeah, yeah. And so... It's good that they look ahead, um, but their secrecy has actually caused more damage for solutions uh, and health for humans. So, you know, the, these technologies that are being torturing people around the world, uh, causing them to shoot up schools and uh, airports and other things, uh, they hide it in their news broadcasts. Oh, he's just crazy. You know, <laughs> they don't go any deeper. Um, and, uh, they could be used for the exact opposite purpose. They, we could empty our jail system out through correctional behavioral modification. We could uh, uh, do health, uh, mental health therapies for many people. We could, all the good stuff is ready to come out, um, but they, it's such a great secret weapon. This way we can control leaders of the world. This way, we can get their secrets, uh, you know, from the other countries without them even knowing it. And so that kind of power is corruptible. Um, so you think that's really what's kind of prompting the continued secrecy? Because they seem to have uh, a sort of a granite lock here. They, they don't want to to expose this at all they've well, got they've got psychiatry in place you know to tamp down any kind of report from the community where people are actually exposing and whistleblowing about it they bring in the you know you are crazy you are a schizophrenic story yeah, to stop it well i mean you have to imagine 
try to put yourself in their shoes. Uh, you're some important top brass general of the Pentagon. You know about this. Uh, you've ordered this. And if this leaks out, not only is your career over, you're probably going to go to a Nuremberg trial for treason. Um, so in the shame of the country, such as America, we're supposed to be the world cop and moral leader. You can't say, yeah, we've been manipulating democracies for 60 years and we've been torturing and we made all this stuff up. You can't. So they don't want it to be leaked this way. The way they want it leaked is the way I've said on my website, oh, I think 10 years ago, they want a parallel rediscovery among controlled technologies, such as what Elon Musk is doing. So he takes the blame. Um, and, uh, and as long, and that's really interesting. They want to blame the co commercial yeah. creators of it. Yes. Yeah. And so that way, then, so it's a good sign. And then all you need is a brain chip from Elon Musk and your mental illness is gone and your voices and everything else. And then he, he is the savior and he's the devil because he was probably doing it before his, how TIs will you know view it. Um, so I think it's a great thing what he's doing because it will show the technology is real, at least to the mass media idiots. You know. So do you think <laughs> Elon knows what's going on? He's aware of these DOD programs? I don't know. I've never spoken to him. I sure would like to. Uh, he's one of my heroes. Uh, um, he you does see, need, he does need a representative of ethics within his company if he's not aware of what's been going on and how he might be portrayed as the bad guy. So, uh, well, I, I have a question he, about Elon Musk. He's spoken about neural lace. You know, he's pretty yeah. much confessed on TV worldwide, na nationwide, that you know tests are underway to uh, pretty much inject people with neural lace. It can be done through a syringe, etc. He's mm -hmm. indicated, in other words, that he's part of you know various compartmentalized black ops projects. I don't. That's that's a leap. Uh, I don't you know. Think? I think it's a little bit of a leap. I think he's a good guy, you know, but again, I was suckered into the DOD and DARPA too. So yeah, I, I <laughs> think about that. Good judge. I may not be a good judge of character. <laughs> I mean, there may be many of you around. I mean, I'm, you know, I mean, seriously, a lot of the guys who go into DOD and CIA and work for the Navy, et cetera, and work on these black ops projects are good guys. They go in, you know, with good intentions and yeah. they, um, you know, give of their greatest expertise. They, they get into the program and they work uh, deeply in the program as it is. They have no idea, perhaps, how their technology and their work is being used, right? Now that's absolutely correct. I am, minus the few of the morally flexibles I talked about. Right, uh, right. But, uh, no, and in a way, they don't want to know. They want the lie. Uh, my country is the best, and I don't want to hear anything else, and it's going to be used for good. You know, that's as far as their moral compass goes. Um, and you're not allowed to talk about what you do, uh, so you can't get any feedback other than the echo chamber amongst the people. I call them the people that wear bling. You know, and all You're the right. um, They like the men. Yeah, they they like shiny objects. Yes. Uh, <laughs> um, and so I, you know, it it really, I'm I'm with you. I I hate secrecy, and knowing now how this cancer virus of technology has spread in secret to basically overthrow mankind, freedom, yes. and democracy. Um, uh, I remember one of my CIA friends, uh, when I first started researching this, uh, said, bring it to the light and the cockroaches will run. And I always remember that. So. That's really great, <laughs> though, that he gave you that advice. Yeah. yeah. You know, he meant, well, he knows he has to take orders do his job, not know, not question it from his handler or whatever, but 
uh, you know, he's still at an, enough moral principle to understand what I must do. So it seems to me that suggests to me, and this is very helpful, really, that, that perhaps there are people, you know, even watching us right now from the DOD and CIA who know exactly what's going on and who are actually glad when there is a bit of exposure like this, you know, when you speak out, etc. And when no, you do I, interviews. I, I know, I think there's a bifurcation of loyalties going on uh, that uh, perhaps they aren't brave enough to do it themselves because they don't want to lose their job or worse in their lives right. um but i think we got a lot of cheerleaders on our side of that. okay that's good to know at least you know let's let's bring this back um robert a little bit to the technology itself because you know so much about the tech and you know when we were speaking uh, on text earlier yesterday you were talking about how there are very and i do know this as well but you probably know this at a much deeper level than the very number of great number of technologies for instance used to create the sensation of voices in the skull or the sound of hearing voices. And there's also, you said, many different ways to affect the nervous system. So neurotech has exploded. Um, did you want to kind of address that a little bit, perhaps? Oh, that is such a huge topic. I mean, that's the books upon books. Yeah. Uh, so uh, the, I can only talk about what the public knows mostly. And it's, um, you know, the, the four different ways to pipe voices in the people's ears uh, directionally. Uh, you either have a microwave radio frequency energy, and a Dr. Wynn from the University of Chicago, you know, demonstrates this, that the brain will vibrate the inner ear with microwave pulses and you send voices that way. Uh, I think it was Medusa is the weaponized uh, army version of that system. Uh, there's LRAD. The Singapore Sling is a gin-based sling. Uh, Alexa, sling. stop. <laughs> My AI thought it was Alexa starting. had to join the conversation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. Oh, no, she Alexa heard you say her name. <laughs> uh, oh, no. <laughs> Canceling. Um, and then I guess that's a demonstration uh, of AI, sorry. <laughs> no, yeah, sometimes uh, my Google, and I won't mention her name, I get in <laughs> conversations without me, and I'm like, okay, yeah, humans are up. <laughs> you know? But uh, okay, so there, there's some other technologies, the audio spotlight that works on sound pressure waves, a phase ray, uh, you can point at somebody, LRAD, for example, is a long range acoustical device. Um, again, you don't understand how the sound is being projected, but the, the one that's so complicated and the super secret one, which I'll talk about a little bit because it's, uh, because I've already done an MIT, uh, interview that I've mentioned it on and kind of shown how it's going to work. Um, two brains can create their own language between them. Uh, but they have to be trained, they have to be synchronized. So you can use something like the microwave hearing effect on both brains simultaneously, uh, correlate the brainwave patterns, and you have a bi-directional feedback. And eventually they will learn the same vocabulary. And now let's say I'm the man in the middle, uh, trying to decipher the spy, your spy, let's pretend you're a spy. And I'm picking up these uh, these radio frequency energies on you. I will not be able to decipher what they mean to your brain. Uh, so it's a spur perfect spy tool. You don't need any electronics, implants, nothing. Uh, but it takes a lot of time to develop it. It usually three three months to a year some people does never work it doesn't work on but i call it encrypted uh, uh photonics i'm uh, not photonics uh, uh encrypted speech uh and uh i'm i i have uh, simulations with primitive neural networks that i show how it works uh and how you how it operates but 
that's the that's the super secret one because that leads to synthetic telepathy. All the emotions can be controlled of the brain, uh, touch, taste, sound. We can induce, record uh, these brain signatures and then realign them for that sensual experience uh, later. Now, the positive things, imagine sharing a dream with your partner and lover, and that'd be a good use. Yeah, but, I uh, think right, we may have seen that in Solaris, so, you know. Yeah, yeah, like or some others, but, but right now it's a good torture tool, so we record the tortures, pains, and et cetera, and replay them among other people, and their brain can't tell the difference. It's suffering, uh, but we have no, you know how lawyers just make up their own language and definition. Well, it's it's enhanced interrogation. It's not torture. But the brain and it still is experiencing the trauma and and pain. So those uh, you know the snakes who get involved with their their spell casting to change the English language and the common definition really bother me sometimes. <laughs> oh yeah, because that's the same kind of thinking that's transferred over here. And it kind of sounds like from what you are saying, Robert, that you're saying that, that they're taking two brains and there's no informed consent, obviously, over here. Right. This is complete, you know, railroading of consent, completely ignoring, because these are pe pe people in the field are reporting that this has happened to them. There is no consent. So they're taking somebody's brain, they're taking somebody's brain waves. they are stealing, harvesting their brain waves. They are examining, categorizing them, and then they're kind of merging. This is heterodyning that you're talking about, right? Yeah. Heterodyning and cloning. And they're heterodyning with somebody else's brain waves and then kind of cloning that person's brain waves onto yours so that you are becoming another person. Your brain is being seen in this equation as a machine. As correct. Oh, absolutely correct. And, uh, you know, uh, it, it really is, I was going to name my book rather than Project Soul Catchers, Project Soul Stealing. Uh, but, you know, I thought... That it, is what it is. It's it, stealing. It, it, it literally is. So let's say I'm some rich billionaire and I want to clone my mind and onto a new beautiful body. I can do that i can literally force a copy of my brain that's horrible like that. to hear oh my and god learn. Do you think this is I, I know i didn't want to say it but it gets worse it gets far worse <laughs> you know with these transhumanists who are busy drinking the blood of babies you can imagine they would be doing precisely this yeah we know what they're doing uh but here, here's the good news so they're gonna seduce soldiers in the future who cannot die we store your brain waves and we'll just clone it onto someone else's body we don't like and we got a new body. <laughs> so you can see where this is going. It's not good. We need the, these discussions. This is absolutely uh, terrible. We need these discussions and we need them with the scientists and the military guys who are actually running these programs, you know? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, this I, is absolutely, I mean, this I, is definitely a lot, shocking. A lot of people can't handle it. and. Especially, you know, the problem, another problem we run into is uh, while there is such a beautiful future ahead for any technology is neutral, they're using it for such evil based on our current society's uh, morality. And you were asking, why do they have to keep it so secret? Well, you can see 95% of the world is religious. You're taking away the belief of free will now. Uh, which the religion relies upon and justice relies upon free will. So society will become anarchy if they know we've been doing this for so long. Uh, so they have to keep it secret. Uh, However, at the very same time, you know, we are seeing now they are keeping the, the darkest part secret, no doubt about it, because, you know, this is why TIs are being named mentally ill and so forth. Yeah. And that's the mental illness program, which is very, very wrong. And, you know, something that I'm hoping that all of these conversations can change ultimately. Well, but, uh, could I interrupt you just for okay. a moment? Because that's an important point. Is the Russians use their psychology community, shrink community, whatever, uh, to put away dissidents. If you don't yeah. agree with the government, Chinese do it. Uh, 
Americans do it. Now it's in our DSM-5, if you disagree, too often. Um, so they You have them. oppositional defined disorder, right? Yes, you know the term, yes, correct. Unbelievable. Isn't it? Isn't it's it? Ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. It's <laughs> ridiculous. Um, and so, uh, but if you go back in history of, uh, let's say, Dr. Ewan Cameron, who was president of the, you know, psychiatric uh, worldwide, uh, you know, community, right. uh, was brainwashing, literally washing, not just programming, washing. Psychic driving, yeah. Psychic driving. And they're still using that technique wirelessly on TIs, except now they're chatterbots rather than two-track tapes to break them down. I want but to get back to that at some point, but, you know, never women, mind. I don't want to interrupt you. <laughs> women with mild depression went in, you know, and the CI likes to take it out of country so we they don't dirty their hands. I think it was the University of Montreal, Toronto. I, I think it was Montreal. And uh, yeah, about 100 women he destroyed their lives, their brains, everything with CIA funding. So right. if this weapon has existed since then, which it has, all we have to do is pay off the top shrinks to add it to the DSM manual as a symptom of a new neurosis that may have come about, but it's a weapon system. <laughs> and they've done it, it and, sounds like. And they've done it, and the drinks aren't scientists. Remember, they just do correlation. Does a drug help? Does it, you know, et cetera. They, they don't know. You like the drug bullies. They, they, yeah, <laughs> that's what they are. They're the drug bullies. Uh, as long as the drugs are taxed, they're good to go, you know. I know, anyway, they work side by go. side with all the totalitarians. <laughs> they, they sort yeah. of establish fascism. So, I mean, it's frightening what the power that's been given to psychiatrists. This issue of psychic driving, you know, and uh, driving people mad, and that, that TIs are reporting it. You mentioned that TIs are reporting it. But, you know, part of the larger question here is that there are many forms of mind control that are actually being leveled at everybody. Not just oh, TIs, right? yeah, yeah, you know, and it's it's weird. Ever since nine eleven, our senators have passed because they're really controlled by the Pentagon and the, you know, paid for by all the okay. uh, contracting companies, yeah. you know, bribed and etc. Um, they uh, they pass laws that it's finally legal to use propaganda, although it's always been done on the U.S. citizens. Uh, and they're using counterintelligence. They're going into, uh, you know, Facebook, our support groups, everything like you know. Yes. And they're actually paid government agents to disrupt the conversation. Oh yeah, and, <laughs> I think know, we have. I'm like familiar our, with that. Our tax dollars are are paying these idiots to harm the truth from coming out to save us. It's a, it's really brilliantly evil. This is brilliantly evil. So I, you know, I've always liked the bad, the villains and bad guys, often in the James Bond movies, for their brilliance. <laughs> well, they are well, in a my movie. Own government is brilliantly evil. You know, I got to admire them for that. <laughs> well, re real life evil is a little bit different than fiction yeah, evil, I as you know, is, as you know, Robert. And you know, and it this is, is horrifying. This has gone on for so long and unnoticed. You know. And that's really, part of the reason why this hasn't come out. Although yeah. I think the main reason it hasn't come out is because media has got the hold on that. You know, it's mm -hmm. got the lid on that. I would like to think that we are busting through that lid and, you know, making our voices heard and our presence I think, felt. I think every bit counts. I, you know, I never thought I would see a solution in my lifetime. But now, you know, if I live another 10 years, I think we might see something real eventually happen, you know, where uh, the, the Pentagon said you can uh, do awful things to about three to six percent of any population falsely in prison, et cetera, in any country. But if the knowledge of that gets over six percent, then a successful revolution can occur. Uh, and so I think we're penetrating that 6% of people know about this level. 
and that it may be a runaway process that everyone will eventually know and justice can be served eventually. I hope you're right on that count. You, I think the three to six percent you're talking about, the Pentagon was directing at other countries, right? I mean, yeah, uh, well, Vietnam, in particular, <laughs> right? Uh, but you're right. Prison, but, but it applies to every country, you know. It and applies they, to us, and we are yeah. the victims of major psyops now that we have, you know, during Obama's time, we have executive orders permitting propaganda, as you said, yeah. you know. So the American people are being propagandized, kind of legally. <laughs> yeah. well, everything the Nazis did, you know, killing off the Jews and et cetera, was all legal. So I don't really follow human law that much. It seems quite arbitrary, depending on country, time frame, civilization, et cetera. Um, so you got to follow your own moral compass. And I know this is horrible, and people need to know the truth. That's absolutely brilliant, Robert. Thank you for saying that. Do you have any advice for the people inside the CIA, inside the U.S. Navy programs, intelligence agencies, the DOD, who know this is wrong? I mean, there are so many programs ongoing, right? There are the Manchurian candidate programs, the false flag, you know, setting up well, the lone hundreds, terrorist programs. Hundreds, hundreds. Hundreds uh, and all sorts of neurological disruption and yeah. mental takeover programs. So if these guys know that is wrong and they're still sitting in the dark and, you know, half of them are hive minded and they're sitting around in round tables inside each other's heads talking to each other yeah, yeah. <laughs> instead true, of true, developing true. themselves, you know, spiritually. True, true. Um, what can one say to them? What would you could you say something to them to kind of snap out of it? No, I. Uh... I posted something on my Facebook page the other day. Uh, I, I was just, you know, I, I shame different branches of the government for staying ignorant uh, against the greatest threat humanity and, uh, and sovereign existence uh, has to deal with. Uh, but that had to do with the uh, FBI or the government wanting uh, Ancestry.com DNA and other things like that. I purposely posted false DNA, lots of tests with different names, including my own, had different people spin on them, <laughs> et cetera. So I, it turns out I'm Adam. I'm related to almost everyone in the world now. <laughs> so if there's a crime, they come, wow. I'm, I'm guilty. <laughs> the Wait a minute, you did your DNA testing and you discovered yeah. you're related? No, I didn't. So the first two DNA tests I did said I wasn't human. And I'm like, okay, that's an insult. <laughs> said you weren't <laughs> human. Know. And then I'm like, look at what they've done to the planet. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I'm, True. I, and then, but I bought a bunch of kits to hand out to friends and family as Christmas gifts. And so I decided, no. Screw this, I'm gonna just make random people pay them or whatever, spit in these tubes and cement them under my name, <laughs> children's name, and everything else. What did <laughs> you so do? There... Stand by the metro and hand out kids? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And uh, and so then uh then I just said the FBI, even if you get your database falsely through asking this private company for their data or forcing them to your data samples are tampered with. You can't ask for a FISA warrant based on that I just told you. I, I contaminated your databases, so you can't start breaking in doors. Uh, and then I gave the CIA a warning. You were asking me if I've given warnings. I can't remember what the warning. Oh, you can't make genetic weapons. Uh, so the CIA was trying to kill off dark-skinned people back in the 60s, and they were working on viral weapons. And now the government has your family line DNA. They can create specific viruses that will only kill off your genetic line. Oh so I gave God. them a warning. Since I'm related to everyone in the world, don't use my DNA sample because <laughs> you'll be killing yourselves. <laughs> But anyway, really you, were, you were talking about neuro neuroscience, and um, no, I do not know how to change those people. They're so brainwashed into false patriotism, radicalism, 
uh, that uh, I don't think there's any coming back to reality for them. Do you think they think that this is, you know, obviously when I look at what uh, the kind of weapons, you know, because I look at non-lethal weapons a lot, I'm trying to understand the whole history, etc. Remember, Uh, these are dial-in lethality. So you got to be careful. Non-lethal means they cannot kill, like maybe pepper spray. Uh, these type of weapons can make you kill yourself or others or harm yourself. So they're dial-in lethality information weapons. That's really interesting because these are non-lethal neuro weapons, you know, which actually are also psychological weapons. Yes. And I know they're called psychotronic weapons as well. Yeah. Right? So it's an indirection of murder. And mm-hmm. so they, again, the lawyers have to get, in, get involved well, technically, we didn't kill them because we talked them to their death. And that, that's the colonel said. If you can pipe voices into someone's head, I will find a way to talk them to their death. So they're dial in lethality, psychological weapons, torture weapons. I mean, it covers a broad range, broad spectrum of language that we haven't settled on yet. Correct. And, you know, it seems to me just looking at all of this, that the people who are developing these weapons and continuing to use them and continuing to maintain secrecy in order to use them appear to imagine that um, there is going to be no future without these weapons. These weapons are the future. They're going to continue. Um, And unfortunately, they're right. I think we can create treaties on regulations and watch groups, but um, everyone agrees these these kind of weapons are better than nuclear weapons or. But who is weapons. everybody? Not everybody in the world. No, no, but see, that's the problem. No one's in this discussion because they won't tell anybody about what we've done. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a small that's little it. circle, you know. It's, it's like a small little circle. That's it's like correct. the Cecil Rhodes round table, table. Of, of the Illuminati. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Right. So it's them. It's not <laughs> us, you know. I mean, if they ask us, you. I remember you quoting ninety-five percent of the world earlier. Ninety-five to ninety-eight percent of humanity would simply say no. I think it's only the two percent who want to control everybody else who think that these weapons are great because they involve taking over the brain, you know, and they take over the body. Body. What is biohacking mean? and neurohacking? Who wants yeah. that? Well, what does government mean in Latin? Governor to steer meant of the mind, to <laughs> control the mind. So you're talking about getting rid of government all they got it. This is their greatest weapon. <laughs> you will vote for me and enjoy it and think you're free. <laughs> it's incredible, you know, and I it seems know. to me. And of course, talking to other people, they they say that the only way to uh, combat this weaponry is to develop yourself spiritually and kind of beat it that way. Yeah, yeah. And that that actually is true. If you purify yourself, they use the seven deadly sins, for example, to manipulate people. Uh, If you can purify yourself from those, they have no levers of which to control you. Oh, I see. Very Uh, interesting. So so there is truth to that. And the other aspect to it that I just wanted to mention is the whole issue of neuroethics. You know, that has become a field now, neuroethics and bioethics, although it appears that it's... I'm it exists. Taken 20 years. But it's, yeah, it's, but it's still it's, questionable as to what that field is doing. I mean, who's running the neuroethics field? Look at Dr. James Giordano. He yeah. is a military neuroscientist. He's very yeah. vocal. He gives a lot of lectures. We see his videos yeah. on YouTube. University and hey, of he's running the neuroethics department at Georgetown. Yeah. What the heck oh, does that Georgetown. mean? Okay. Yeah. You know, <laughs> how does a military neuroscientist get to run the neuroethics department in Georgetown? Yeah, it does seem like a conflict of interest, doesn't it? Uh, but you know, um, yeah, there will be other leaders to step forward that I think might be more believable. Uh, everything I've heard from them seems right and good. So, you know, I'm not going to... Um, Well, I'm grateful to him for having spoken out because he has published to the world the extent and depth and range and scope of this horrific neurotechnology that's currently in use, you know, by the DOD and by the DOJ, because he's talked about predictive neurotechnologies as well. So he's done a lot of talking. He's doing a lot of public speaking. He's actually literally putting the information out in plain sight. But, you know, the question is, how ethical is this information? Because he's talking about it as an inevitability. We have this neurotech. We have this 
near a weaponry. We are going to use it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You can never take, uh, you know, once man discovered fire, you're never taking that technology away from them. So we have to find a way to cope, with deal, trans, uh, you know, move forward. And maybe once we understand the whole public, everybody understands this technology, you will get accelerated education. You don't have to waste millions of dollars in 30 years of your life and you can have that information right in your brain and all the good things that may come from it, maybe society will agree to it. Individually, they will join the hive mind. But don't steal minds, don't steal brains, don't be doing this a horrific human maximum pain torture stuff that they're doing right now uh, and to try to shape pol politics by creating uh, people who hear voices go shoot up schools and etc. So you want to take away the gun rights of your country by stimulus response of the voters and give pressure to the politicians. That's so old school. I don't know if they really think we're that dumb, but I, maybe we are. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, you know, I guess once something has been created, you can't uncreate it. No, you can't. I mean, but, what are you going to do? Burn books, purge computers, kill people who know that information? Yeah, you can't uncreate the knowledge. No. But you can, you can regulate, as you say, yes. you know. Yeah. You can regulate. I mean, this is what Princess Diana was trying to do with the landmines, you know, to get the world to yeah. ban landmines, etc. Yeah. And uh, I don't know to what extent she was successful. We know that she was killed, but um, well, yeah, or depleted uranium uh, mm -hmm. we use for tank piercing and bullets. Well, when we're done conquering that country, there's, still, there's radioactive material everywhere, and children are going to be deformed you know born deformed or die and, uh early cancer deaths and etc the cost of war is so much greater than the way the pentagon general accountant uh, does the cost <laughs> i assure you that's um, right anyway. and that's the situation that we are facing today you know robert this has been an incredible conversation i think we've gone a lot of places and i think you've covered so much and i thank you for your candor because i think that was the greatest part of this conversation we had a sort of <laughs> all you know gloves off no no holds barred kind of conversation tonight um perhaps we should close on you know because there is a need you know to regulate this technology because it is causing harm it's causing grave harm to many many people thousands hundreds of thousands i mean do you have a figure even as to how many ti's there are in the world minimum you know? i have a minimum um uh, which is ten thousand, but the maximum is much much larger and so the gap of what we know of who's being affected by this uh it could be everyone in the world um to some extent just not tortured but influenced. Uh, so, yeah, we don't know. That's why we need someone to answer these questions with much, uh, with a much higher security clearance. <laughs> We definitely do. I mean, I would personally, you know, issue a call at any time to anybody who is inside, you know, the secret services, the intelligence agencies, DOD to step forward, to sort of listen to the call of your heart and your conscience, because it's very important. Humanity is at stake here. So I, right? I actually did the reverse. I, I just, I know Trump doesn't listen to me, but I said, you need to completely reorganize the intelligence agency structures, fire everybody, let them reapply for their jobs, because some of them have, are lacking the true loyalty of the Constitution and humanity here. Uh, keep the ones in the field you think are still good, but uh, no, I, I, I want a complete reorg of our government. It's uh, failed us. And, uh, this is one example. That's a great place to start. Reorganization of the government. 
you know, to take these tools away from those who wish harm to humanity and who are indeed engaging in harm to humanity. Um, I was going to ask his closing words, Robert, if you wanted to say anything to, to people who are watching, who are listening, um, who understand well, what's going on and who perhaps, I mean, what can people take away from this? People who don't know that this is going on and people who do know that this is going on. What you know, can people do? <laughs> Those are two different audiences. Um, <laughs> That's true. Uh, those Sorry. who, well, there's something coming up. I, I see, oh, you said this is live. Yes. So um, there's the Patriot Act and the NDAA, and there was another one that kind of gave uh, the government unlimited surveillance powers, which reading the mind and the bioelectricity is a surveillance uh, technology, uh, the Electronics Eavesdropping Act, the centers won't even touch, uh, is so outdated, it's from like the 50s, so they clearly want more government power, but there's a 215, section 215 of the Patriot Act is coming up to vote in March, I think 15th, um, so pressure your senators to make sure they do they do not allow it to proceed. Now, I can't remember if that's a positive vote or a negative vote, but say do not allow the section, section two, 215 to be 15. renewed, right? Renewed, I, correct, correct, correct. Yeah, I think it came up in 2015 and I remember, you know, posting petitions, writing impassioned notes on my website, telling people, call your senator as you know, tell yeah. them not to renew. And of course they renewed it in 2015. Yeah. No, you know, when they did it, uh, they renewed the Patriot while Trump was being impeached, you know, everyone's distracted by that. So they use all these techniques to make sure the public doesn't know what they're really up to. And, you know, grabbing for power, money, insider trading with all the senators. And our government's so corrupt, it's just out of control. But uh, anyway, it's been a good talk that we do need to end this and maybe we'll have another one again. I hope so. Thanks very much, Robert. I think that's great advice to end on. And, you know, we understand the government is corrupt. The Senate is corrupt. The Congress is corrupt. But, you know, it's it's our voices ultimately that's that can make a difference. And that's we'll, right. Right. So let's focus on the positive, the right? <laughs> Yeah, and focus, on the positive. <laughs> focus on the positive and on a positive note. And, you know, each of us takes take steps. Speak out, you know, be public about your dissent to the Patriot Act, Section 215. Let senators know your thoughts, etc. And perhaps there will be a change. And that's the first step. And there are many other steps, no doubt, that each of us can take. So on that note, uh, Robert, thank you again so very much for doing this interview at short notice. Oh, actually, we'd arranged it for a couple of weeks, I think. But thank you for making time tonight. Thanks, everybody, for watching, and we'll see you again very soon. Bye-bye. Cheers.